Hello, in today's video, I'm going to share 17 ways you can save money on food when times are hard, such as now. With food prices going up and our paychecks barely moving forward, if at all, it's becoming more challenging to afford food, especially quality food. For those who are in between jobs or without an income, it's even worse. But just because food is more difficult to come by doesn't mean we should opt for unhealthy cheap food or go without. There are ways, even in today's world, where you can save money on food while buying healthy food that won't make you sick. Let me show you how. Shop at discount stores. Buy your food at discount stores like Aldi and Dollar Tree if you live in the United States. Yes, I said Dollar Tree. While I wouldn't recommend buying items like meat and ultra processed foods at Dollar Tree, they do have a good selection of dry and canned whole foods such as rice, beans, and vegetables. They also have processed foods with few but identifiable ingredients such as tomato sauce and pasta. I'll link a video on 7 healthy Dollar Tree food items to save on groceries on the screen. But buying food at discount stores and grocery stores will allow you to access healthy whole food for less. Though their sizes can be small, their cheaper prices will allow you to purchase more so it evens out compared to buying more expensive groceries at a big box store or large grocery store like Target and Whole Foods. A bonus tip is to look at the clearance section when shopping at big box and large grocery stores. I've noticed that they have areas where they stock their significantly reduced items they want to clear out. Many times the foods are good such as canned vegetables, beans, and rice. Shop wholesale. These are stores like Sam's Club and Costco where they sell food and other household items in bulk. You usually have to pay a membership fee to shop there. As of today, a Sam's Club yearly membership is around $45. While the membership fee may not sound appealing, having the opportunity to buy food in bulk will allow you to save a lot of money in a year, pay in for the membership fee in the end. You can stock up on canned and dry goods to supply you for the year, and you can even buy produce to free some for later use. If you have staples that you rely on and the space to store them, shopping wholesale can allow you to save a lot of money cutting your grocery bills significantly. Buy bulk. Another way to save money is to buy bulk through online websites such as www.bulkfoods.com. This is another option if there are specific staples you rely on and you don't want a wholesale membership since you won't buy a large variety of food throughout the year or if a wholesale store is not close to you. Buying bulk is ideal if you rely on staples such as rice, beans, nuts, dried fruits and vegetables and other grains like oats, barley and quinoa. Often, when you buy bulk, you can get a lot of what you need at a better deal since bulk prices tend to be cheaper than conventional prices once size and quantity are factored in. Buy generic brands. Generic brands were once thought to be inferior to brand names, but in recent years, I've noticed that there is really no difference between a generic can of black beans and a name brand can of black beans. That is not to say that all generic brands have the same quality as name brands, but more and more generic brands are becoming just as good as brand names. Consider giving generic brands, such as store brands, a try to save money on food. You'll be surprised how there is no difference between the brand name and generic brand other than cost. Trader Joe's and Aldi's in the United States are two stores where the generic brands are just as good in quality and taste as the brand names. Avoid food waste. Do your best to not toss out food or a lot of it. This primarily means finding ways to keep food fresh and buying only what you can keep fresh for a specific period of time. Focus on food that is versatile, meaning it can work well with a multitude of dishes, such as beans. One day, it can work with soup, then burritos on another day. Also consider reusing leftovers, especially if you don't feel like eating the same thing two days in a row you can reinvent it into a different meal, such as with meat. Baked chicken one night can be transformed to stir fry the next. You can even get creative and use food scraps such as vegetable peels for vegetable stock and seasoning if you dehydrate them. Also think about establishing effective food storage methods. If you get a good deal on items such as meat and produce, think about freezing them properly, even canning produce, so they can last several months to a year. For dry and canned goods, Store them in pantries that are cool and dry with no humidity. Buy less meat. Currently, meat is one minimally processed food that is expensive, especially if you're seeking quality meat without the antibiotics 
hormones, preservatives, and that's organic, grass-fed, cage-free, and so on. If you can limit your meat consumption, you can save a lot of money on food. If protein is your concern, there are many whole foods that contain high amounts of protein per servant, some being as high as 18 grams per servant. I will link a video on the top 25 whole food protein sources here. If you're someone who enjoys consuming meat almost daily, if not every day, consider eating smaller portions, such as half the size of a deck of cards. Just fill up the rest of your meal with filling whole foods such as beans, potatoes, nuts, or grains. Buy fewer or no snack or ultra-processed foods. As an advocate for the whole food diet, I would recommend eliminating conventional snack foods and ultra-processed foods such as chips, crackers, cookies, and more from your diet. Not only will it benefit you health-wise, but you'll save a lot of money. It's often thought that processed foods are cheaper than whole foods and in some cases that may be true. A generic bag of cheese puffs at a gas station may be cheaper than a bag of baby carrots. Though I'm not even sure about that because I've seen baby carrots sold for a dollar so the cheese puffs would have to be cheaper than that. Nevertheless, ultra processed foods are not necessarily cheaper than whole foods, especially when you get into the fancy brand names with labels such as organic, gluten free, keto, and more. If you can eliminate these foods and focus on more filling and nutrient dense whole foods such as nuts, fruits, and vegetables, even minimally processed foods such as cheese and Greek yogurt. They will keep you satiated longer and keep more money in your pocket now and long term by not getting seriously ill. Use coupons and watch for sales. From my experience, I don't come across coupons for Whole Foods often, but on occasion I may see some for frozen produce and other canned and dried Whole Foods. But you can generally find coupons for less toxic processed foods such as sparkling water, pasta, broth, and tomato sauce. If you get store advertisements in the mail or newspaper, comb through them to see if there are relevant coupons where you can save money. Another thing you can do is follow your favorite health brands on social media or through email. Often they will have offers and sales where you can stock up and save money. Also pay attention to seasonal sales and the clearance section in stores as mentioned earlier. When a store is trying to clear out stock, they'll put food items in a designated section of the store or place an obvious sales sticker on them. Buy in-season produce. Buying fruits and vegetables during the time they naturally grow and mature is the cheapest. When they're in abundance, grocery stores want to make sure they all sell before they go bad. So in-season fruits and vegetables are cheaper than off-season. This is your opportunity to stock up on them to save money. To enjoy them long-term, freeze or can the excess. Go for local produce such as shopping at farmer's markets where you can get them the freshest. Avoid packaged or pre-made food. This is similar to my point on snack and ultra processed foods, but the focus here is on whole foods that are packaged or pre-made such as salad mixes, rice kits, even bagged fruits and vegetables in some cases. When possible, avoid pre-made and packaged whole foods. They tend to be more expensive since you're paying for convenience. Though buying the whole unadulterated whole food can sometimes mean more work in the kitchen to prepare and store them, it will be worth it in the end because you'll save more money and sometimes get a fresher product. There have been too many times when I bought a container of wilted salad without realizing it until I opened the package. Choose frozen produce. Frozen fruits and vegetables tend to be cheap, especially if you buy plain and simple blends such as green beans, mixed vegetables, and blueberries. Usually pick them frozen at peak freshness Frozen produce allows you to enjoy healthy and delicious food off-season where you can buy less as well to save money. Invest in a deep freezer if possible or create space in your current freezer for fruits and vegetables you know you'll use throughout the year. Eat out less. Eating out is not only unhealthy but it's expensive and this is one thing that is not going to get cheaper. Even fast food restaurants like McDonald's is getting expensive per meal. So only eat out when you must or on occasion and invest in cooking more at home. Not only will you save more money, but you'll be able to control the ingredients that are in your food and how it's prepared. You'll also be able to get more food for your dollar compared to eating out at restaurants which will only give you one or two meals at best per purchase. This also includes making your own drinks such as coffees and smoothies at home versus stopping at the cafe or coffee shop every day or near daily. Grow your own produce. If you have the right environment and motivation, you can save tremendously on food by growing your own produce such as vegetables and herbs. You may even live in an area that favors producing fruits such as orange and apple trees, even berry bushes in which you can invest in those items or already have them if you're really lucky. 
But in general, grow and produce in a small garden in your yard or even cherry tomatoes and herbs in small pots on your porch or balcony can save you a lot since seeds are relatively cheap and soil may be readily available if you already own land. But even if you have to buy some pots and soil, the return on your investment will be huge. I even know of people who are able to grow essential herbs indoors on their windowsill. Choose produce and herbs that you rely on a lot and that are costly to buy at the grocery store. If you find there are some produce that are fairly cheap, you can continue to buy them in store and grow the ones you know you'll save a lot of money on at home or on another available plot of land. Plan your meals weekly. When you plan your meals, ideally weekly, you can combat waste and save money when you grocery shop because you will only buy the food you know you'll consume that week, not overbuying and risking that they go bad. So choose one day each week to plan out your meals, such as breakfast, lunch, dinner, and others such as snacks if you plan to have them. Try to incorporate versatile ingredients such as grains, beans, even pasta that can be used for different dishes that week. That way you won't have to buy a lot of different foods which could increase cost and buy bulk instead which will ultimately lower cost. An easy way to plan your meals is to gather the recipes you will make, write down the specific ingredients and subtract the ingredients that are already in your kitchen. Then you'll have your grocery list that you can stick to when you shop. Look for food banks. Consider going to food banks. Now I only recommend this if you have absolutely no money such as being between jobs and you don't have other means of obtaining food such as not having food stamps. This is to leave more food for those who may not have the means to acquire food at grocery stores. But if you are one who can benefit from food banks, consider locating some in your community. They often have the basics, such as non-perishables like grains, beans, and canned goods that can last you a long time. There are even organizations such as churches who may have community gardens where they share their excess produce with anyone who could use them. The good thing with food banks and community resources is if you really have no money for food, they are free so you can obtain them at no cost. Keep a food inventory. This might sound silly, but keeping a list, whether in a notebook or on the computer, of the food items in your pantry and fridge will help you buy less and save money. Knowing what you have in real time will help you plan out your meals so you use up what you need to before it expires. It will also help control your spending by making you aware of what you already have and don't need to buy. You can review and update the list as you go over your kitchen weekly or monthly, whatever works best for you, to see what you need more of and what you don't. That way, when you buy food, you know you are only buying what you don't have or have a little stock of and what you need. Buy cheaper ingredients. When you don't have a lot of money at hand, it's best to keep your meals simple. Opt for recipes that require very few ingredients and use ingredients that are considered cheap. That does not mean in quality, but price, and that's easy to come by. So instead of buying quinoa, which tends to be expensive, go for brown rice instead. Or instead of olive oil for your soup, consider omitting it. You may find that it does not affect the taste or outcome of the food. While organic food is not foolproof in avoiding toxic chemicals in food, Opting for organic food does minimize how much toxins you consume, so I will always champion for choosing organic over conventional. However, organic food tends to cost more than conventional food, so if you don't have a lot of money, it helps to know which foods are known to have high levels of toxins and which have the least. So you can choose organic for those known to have the highest and choose conventional for those known to have the lowest. I recommend checking the Environmental Working Group's website for an updated list on the foods with the highest and lowest levels of toxins. Generally, produce with thin skins, such as berries, will have higher concentration of toxins compared to produce with thicker skins, such as an avocado. But that is not always the case for all produce. So again, check out the Environmental Working Group for the list. But at the end of the day, a carton of conventional strawberries will always be better than a box of strawberry flavored fruit snacks or a strawberry juice drink. So if you really can't afford organic whole foods, conventional whole foods are the next best thing. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope I shared 17 valuable ways you can save money on food when times are hard. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share so others wanting to save money on food can discover this video. Subscribe for more whole food and nutrition videos. And until next time, take care.